Hey everybody, what's going on? You and you and you and that guy over there and the other guy kind of over there sitting on his love seat. Yeah, you. <laughs> what's going on? All right, it's Saturday. Hey, thank God for Saturdays. So, I know you guys are waiting for the Dio video and you're waiting for the White Snake video and you're waiting for Ozzy. It's all coming, all right? Yeah, I know, so is Christmas. But in the meantime, I'm going to... um. Kind of like a short little video today. Hey, pff, what's short with me, right? Bip, 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 Mr. Friggin' Talkity Chattermouth over here. We'll see at the end of this how short this is. So today I want to hit on a, on a topic. I mean, you can kind of, you know, get a gist of kind of like what's behind me over yonder. Yeah, that stuff. Is it glam? Is it hair metal? Who named all this? Like, where did glam metal come from? Who invented the term hairband? And what exactly is hairband? Is, I mean, Paul Stanley had hair back in what? 72, 74, his freaking hair was out there here. You know what I mean? Bands always had big, long hair. So when did this start? Did it start in the mid 80s? You know, with Poison and Motley Crue and Aquanet, you know, London, Wasp, this hairband crap, right? Now, Glam, that shit started. Like in the 70s, right? You had like Mott the Hoople, you had Slade, you had David Bowie. I mean, is Mick Jagger considered glam because he put friggin' eye, blue eyeshadow on for like a tour? Was that glam? Certainly wasn't hair metal, that's for sure, right? So, you know, bands like Sweet, and then you had the New York Dolls. Is that glam or is that hair band? When it, Poison is considered hair band, right? Crew got hair band. But they weren't really considered a hair band on the first album, right? Did they get considered more hair band on the third album when they started dressing as chicks? Does hair band mean dressing as girls with big freaking hair? Because then the New York Dolls started that shit way before. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, I was Cooper a little bit, you know, back in the early 60s. He was kind of frilly. I mean, the genre is just ridiculous, all right? But um, to me... New Yorker, this stuff all started on, like, the West Coast. The hairband stuff started on the West Coast. I mean, Poison left Pennsylvania. They went to L.A. You know, Black and Blue left Oregon. They went to L.A. Everybody near mother went to freaking L.A. You know, right? So, before Van Halen, right, you had your Black Sabbaths, and you had your Priest, and you had your Maiden, and all that stuff, right? Well, Maiden came, 81, Van Halen popped out around what? 77, 78, 79, somewhere around there. So, but Van Halen is happy, summertime, West Coast, you know? Over here on the East Coast, we get it for what? Two months, July, August, <laughs> you know? But out there in California, man, it's always sunny. They're always happy. <laughs> Over here, not so much when the winter rolls around. We get kind of grumpy. So, did all that happy stuff basically started out there, my opinion, all right? So, there's a couple bands I want to cover today. Um, it's no particular order. I just grabbed a couple and I just want to talk about it a little bit because they all kind of fit in that genre somewhat. Um, yeah, some of them you're going to know. You're probably you're going to know all of them, like seriously. So, the first band I want to talk about, um, I started off with an EP. Okay, and I didn't hear any of the music until I had the EP in my hand. Boom, flip it over, and I saw the song Walking the Dog. I'm like, Walking the Dog? Is this the same Walking the Dog as Aerosmith? You know, they're doing a cover song of Aerosmith, which Aerosmith's version is a cover song as well. <laughs> so, you know, again, looking at the cover, I'm like, these dudes got long hair, and, you know, the cover had a pair of legs and stockings with some friggin' little white mice going up the legs. So you know what I'm talking about, right? So talking about rap, okay? So Thrash has like, you know, the big four, you know, the Metallica and the Slayer and the Megadeth. And if you really kind of want to get down to it, it's probably more than four in the hair metal scene. You know, it was Quiet Riot, Rat, Dokken. I mean, Great White was freaking huge. You know, I mean... Cinderella's from Philly. You know, I, I don't know. They look 
hair metal on the cover, but some of it, it's too Aerosmithy to be hair metal, you know? I don't know. Hair metal to me is like, obviously it's poison, all right? That style of music, but Rat wasn't like that, and Great White wasn't like that. Cinderella wasn't like that, that, you know, talk dirty to me stuff. It wasn't that poppy. It was just different, you know? Like Rat kind of, you know, some of that stuff was like Aerosmithy. It had that groove, you know, and Great White, it wasn't poppy, man. It was, it was, like their EP was kind of like more metal, you know, that dun 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 You know, Great White, I mean, they were sounding like Zeppelin towards the end of their, you know, being, you know, they were great. They were blues, you know? So not everything to me is really hairband just because dudes had long hair. So anyway, back to rap, all right? Great band, man. These guys were at the top of the game, right? Now, this is the EP. Now, this is the front, and this is the back. This is the original back cover. There's other EPs out there that says West Coast Music, and the back of it is in color. Those are not the originals. This is the original with the black and white cover. Capiche? All right. So this album, to me, is, is freaking great, man. Uh, the original Back For More, it's actually a little bit longer. Walking the Dog is cool. You know, the Aerosmith song. Tell the World, great freaking song, man. Uh, you Got It is all right. Sweet Cheetah is kind of cool. And then Now uh, You Think You're Tough is another great song, man. It's just so raw. Fucking great shit, man. I love this Rat EP. So bust this out. All right, so this is the original label, all right? Except no others, all right? Cool stuff, man. The first Rat EP. Love it, man. It's freaking great. You know, picking this up and not knowing what was to come with these guys, unbelievable. It was the same thing with Guns N' Roses, man. When I, when I picked up Live Like a Suicide, I had no idea about Appetite for Destruction until it came out. It was like, holy shit. But yeah, man, Rat... You know, I, again, they're more Aerosmithy. I do not consider these guys hairband. They don't sound like poison. I don't even think they're in the same freaking... Just because they're from L.A. and, you know, they got popular and, the, you know, the clothes. But music-wise, total different ball game, man. All right? So then after that, they came out with their album. All right? Rat, Out of the Cellar. I mean, Aerosmith. Rats in the Cellar, right? The song Rats in the Cellar on their album Rocks, which is freaking great. That's my favorite Al Smith album. Rocks. So Rat, Out of the Cellar. Right off the bat, like I just said, Aerosmith for their song, Rats Out of the Cellar. You know? Twani Katane. That's her legs, by the way, as well. Rest in peace. And then, you know, you got the dudes on the back, right? And they kind of look Aerosmithy, right? Freaking uh, Warren D. Martini, man. He looks like Joe Perry, you know? What's his fame? Bobby Blosser? I mean, you know, not really Joey Kramer, but, you know, he could be a distant cousin. <laughs> but, yeah, I just... Great shit, man. This album is fucking killer, man. From the beginning to the end, you know? Like, even the, the drums. It's like the dude is playing acoustic drums, but he's also playing, like, those electronic, like, Simmons... Drums, you know, and like, you know, listening to this, because it's completely different than this. You know, production-wise, everything, drum sound-wise, unbelievable. You know, just the beginning of, of Wanted Man, and, and you're in trouble. It's like, doom, 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 and, and the way the drums are going, great stuff, man. Bew Hill did a great job of producing these guys, man. Bew Hill was responsible for a lot of bands in the 80s, and if it wasn't for him, a lot of these guys would have been... Might not have made it or suffered badly. <laughs> but yeah, man. I mean, Wanted Man, great song. You're in trouble. Love it, man. Round and round. All right. MTV hit Milton Berle. You know, Milton Berle um, is, I forget. Um, oh, produced by uh, View Hill, a, a Berle company. So there was a little connection. I think it was... Um, Robin Crosby might have been somewhat related to Milton Berle. If you don't know who Milton Berle is, he was a comedian. 
way back in the day. He's actually in the round and round video. He's the old guy cross-dressed. Come on, you know the freaking video, seriously. Um, yeah, In Your Direction, another good song, man. She Wants Money, Lack of Communication. Dun, 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 dun. Rock on. Hmm. Ah, great shit, man. Back for more. Again, it's, it's on the EP, which is a little bit longer on here, but awesome on here, man. It's just as well. The Morning After. Another great song. Leave the morning after. Nah, great crap, man. <laughs> I'm insane. Another great song, man. This is just great freaking album, man. And scene of the crime. Just the guitar riffs, the guitar leads. You know, Stephen Percy singing. I mean, just this is just a fucking great album, man. Definitely a must if you're gonna get into this genre. Rat out of the cell. I think everybody in their mother owns this by now. All right, my original copy. All right, it's got the Atlantic stuff on here. You know, typical Atlantic label. Nothing fancy going on there. Great shit, man. Now, I got a funny story about this album for when I bought it. I'll make this short and sweet. It was June, and me and my buddies were in, I think, 12th grade, and we... End of June, school year, you know, we really don't have nothing going on except for like a test here, a test there. So we all cut school. We all cut. We had nothing going on. Ran down to a deli. We had an older person buy beer for us because, you know, they weren't sell us beer. Went down to the park, which was kind of like a real small beach kind of thing. You know, it had a little patch of sand and, you know, the Long Island Sound is out there. And a whole bunch of us, man. It probably like 20, 25 of us just going out, hanging out. We had Frisbees and shit, just chilling. And someone had the first Motley Crue album on cassette, okay? And we must have listened to this thing a hundred freaking times, you know? Because you're paying attention, not paying attention. The sun is beating on you. And I remember at one point playing Frisbee and just list, listening now, listening to the Motley Crue. I'm like, well, this is great, man. Peace of your action and starry eyes and live wire and, you know, take me to the top. Man, what a great song. And over and over listening to it. And then at one point, I actually was using the Frisbee as a pillow because I passed out. <laughs> you know, it's like a hot sun, drinking beers, you know, it gets to you after a while. So I pass out in the grass, wake up, the freaking thing is still playing. So at the end of the day, we all disperse, you know, everybody goes their own way. And me and two of my buddies, I'm like, come on, man, I want to go to the mall because I want to see if they got this Motley Crue album. You go to the mall, there's a Motley Crue, and right next to it is Rat. I'm getting them both. I picked up the rap because I knew the rap from the EP. I was like, holy shit, they got a new album out. And here's the Motley Crue album that I want. I want. The only one that was out at the time. Picked them up. Went home. All buzzed. And now I didn't put the Motley Crue album on because I just heard it for 15 hours. So I throw the rat on. And the moment that needle dropped to the end, just flabbergasted. <laughs> like, holy shit. You know, and back in the day, you know, I, I would buy an album... And if it was this really good, it's just sat on my turntable for like a week because that's all I listened to. I was like, holy shit, this is great. Holy shit, this is great. It was just so new and so fresh and just so different besides, you know, sounding like Aerosmithy here and there, which was great. I loved Aerosmith, man. But just great album. I got another copy of this. This is the Japanese press, okay? You guys know. All right? Now, this guy comes... I can pull it out. It's on the same um, Atlantic label. Yeah, just look different for a second. All right. So that's one end. That's the other end. Yeah, there's nothing. Um, I mean, besides it saying, you know, made in Japan. But yeah, cool stuff. Comes in a plastic, thank God. And it's got the little book inside, you know, with the, the words and the little bio. Let me bust it out. So yeah, you go to the little bio, stuff in Japanese, and it's got the words on the other side in English, which is cool, as usual. Yeah, cool stuff, man. Fucking rat. Rat and roll. And we saw them, uh, and Bon Jovi was opening up. I, I forget if it was Bon Jovi's, yeah, Sli Slippery When Wet had come out, and Bon Jovi didn't quite hit yet, you know? That album didn't explode yet. And Bon Jovi was opening up for Rat. It was crazy. You know, it was a double bill, man. And I think I explained this in one of my other videos. 
And we were sitting there and Gene Simmons came down the aisle. I mean, he was like right there because we were like one section up off the floor, maybe two sections up. I don't know. We were close to the stage. We were on uh, Warren Martini's side. And Gene just comes walking down with a couple guys next to him. And he's jumping up and down trying to get um, Stephen Piercy's attention. You know, I'm like, dude, he's not going to fucking shoot. But he's like, oh, look at me, Stephen. And he's like yelling like Stephen's going to hear him over the freaking music. But uh, yeah, Stephen didn't see him. <laughs> We all saw him, you know, like, oh shit, Gene. But then he just kind of turned around and boom, he was gone and that was the end of him. But crazy shit, right? All right, so Rat's first album, cool shit, right? Then they come out with Invasion of Your Privacy. I mean, again, I, the music changed a little bit, you know, but it's still, still a good album, man. You know, You're in Love, Never Use Love is Cool, Lay It Down was the big hit. Now, you got to remember, when this stuff was coming out, now MTV was out, and you, at this point in the 80s, you had to have a video. I mean, it was just necessary, you know? And those videos back in the day were costing bands like 150 grand, 200 grand, if not more. So not only when a band was putting out an album did they have to, you know, pay back all the royalties to recoup, to pay for the making of the album, which was a couple of hundred grand. Now they had to recoup the money to pay for the freaking video. You know, that's how it kind of works. You know, you don't get paid until the record company gets all their money back first. You know, they give you a loan, <laughs> like, right? The record company loans you all this money to do all this stuff for publicity, for videos, for artwork, for all that stuff. But you ain't getting a dime until the record company gets their money first. First, like Bon Jovi, thank God Slippery When Wet hit because they still owe the record company for the first two albums. Yeah, man, a lot of bands went into freaking debt in the 80s because, you know, freaking million dollar videos. I, holy crap. Yeah, insane. So anyway, Invasion of Your Privacy. Great album, man. Rat was on top of the world. Videos all over MTV. I mean, all the hair bands at this point were on MTV just exploding. Heavy rotation, man. It was sick. Then they had dial MTV where, you know, you would call in, I want to hear Rat, and I want to hear Doc, and, you know, and they, they would play it at whatever time at night, 5, 6 o'clock at night, call now and vote for what you want to hear. This is when MTV, when music meant the M in MTV. Now it's just all freaking reality show. I mean, why, even, why is this freaking thing even on anymore? I don't even know if it's on anymore. Fucking joke. But anyway, yeah, great album, man. I think it's cool. Yeah, Lay It Down, Give It All is a cool song, Closer to My Heart. Cool song, man, Between the Eyes. That's a great one. What You Give is What You Get. Got me on the line. You Should Know By Now and Dangerous But Worth the Risk. Cool stuff, man. Cool stuff. Again, nothing fancy with the, the label. You know, besides that. Production notes, right? Atlantic label, all right? Now, I didn't bother getting this on the uh, Japanese pressing. I really just wanted the first one. Not that this album is bad. I love this one just, you know, just the same. But that first album is just killer. It's killer. Oh, I got a date inside when I bought this. 8-23-85. August. I'm not sure when it was released, but that's when I got it. All right. Now, I just said I saw that concert and Bon Jovi opened up, right? So here's my rat tour program. I still got it, man. <laughs> I still got it. Right? Give you a quick peek. All right? Actually, uh, I still have the Bon Jovi one, but it's up. I, I could pull it out real quick. All right? Steven. <laughs> it's a shame what happened to these guys. I mean, a lot of these bands... The fighting and st the stupid drug abuse. I mean, you know, speaking of Robin, man, rest in peace, dude. Fucking drugs. Now, you guys all know that Juan was in docking before he went to rap. You know, he's on his picture is on docking's first album. But now I don't know if that's Peter Baltz from Except playing bass on that album or Juan. I know they used Juan's picture, but I'm not sure if he played bass on that. I'm going to have to check that out. All right. Cool shout out to the dudes. The Bobby Blotts. 
Go. Cool. You know, these guys used to make fun of Juan, the guys in the band, because he was throwing shapes, you know. I, I forgot what they called him, poser or, I don't know, shape throw. They were making fun of him because he was always throwing shapes, posing on stage. So, yeah, they used to break his balls. <laughs> All right. Hey, the order form. Man, it's got a stain. Somebody spilled something. That's why I can't leave my stuff out. When I leave stuff out, shit happens. That's why everything... In my little cave here, all my music shit has a place. Because when I leave shit out, this is what happens. Pissed me off. Still pissing me off. All right. Here's rap. Bon Jovi want to pull out another time. It, it's up there. All right. Then they come out with this guy here. What is this one? Reach for the sky. Hello. All right. And they continue. Cool album, you know, but now they're starting to kind of, not really decline, decline, but it's starting to kind of move away. I mean, they had Way Cool Junior on here, which was a hit, cool video, but you can feel that the change, you know. I think Way Cool Junior was like really the only uh, hit off of this, you know, video for it. You know, you had City to City, I Want a Woman, that's a cool song, Way Cool Junior. Don't Bite the Hand That Feeds, you know, that could... Almost be, you know, from the Aerosmith, um, it's on Gerardo Line. Yeah, bite the hand of feet, yeah. Uh, I Want to Love You Tonight, Chain Reaction, cool song, No Surprise, cool song. That kind of got a nice little Aerosmith, Aerosmithy thing to it. Bottom Line, What's It Gonna Be, that's a great song. What I'm After, so this has got some cool shit, man. I dig this album, you know, from beginning to end. I have no problems with it. Again, Bew Hill produced it, so it still has that sound. Right? Cool, that's one side. That's the other. Right? Again, it's just on the uh, Atlantic. Bada bing. Nah, right? Yeah, I dig rat. I mean, I, I still listen to them. When did I buy this album? Oh, the date's inside. Uh, you can see it. It says 11 27. What year is that? Looks like 88. November 27th, 88. So, you know, home on Thanksgiving break. You go buy an album. Cool. Then they come out with Dancing Undercover. All right. Now, this is when there was no hits on it. And they came up with Dance at the 11th hour. You know, Buell's like the producer, Bu, Bo, whatever you want to call him. is like, hey, man, we got to come up with something because we're not hearing a hit. And they came up with Dance. And it was in a, an Eddie Murphy movie, too. I don't know if it was like one of those Beverly Hill Cop movies or something. But it's definitely one of those Eddie Murphy uh, movies. So, yeah, you got Dance. Starts off uh, side one. One Good Lover is a cool song. Drive Me Crazy is okay. Uh, slip, of the, slip of the Lip was cool. I think there was a video for that. Body Talk. So it was either Dance or Body Talk that was in the Eddie Murphy movie. Hmm. Gonna have to Google that. One of the two. Maybe, I don't remember if it was Body Talk. I don't know. Whatever. Then you go side two, looking for love. Seventh Avenue, which is cool. It doesn't matter. Cool song. Take a chance. Enough's enough. So, you know, there's some cool stuff on here as well, man. It still has that rat sound. But, like I'm saying, they were starting to kind of decline a little bit. All right. That's the album sleeve. Dude's on the back. And, you know, there's inner turmoil. The guys are fighting with one another about stupid shit. You know, the usual. You know, being a band, being in a band is not easy. You know, you got five guys in a band. And if you're one, this dude here, you got, it's like having four girlfriends because everybody just wants something different and you're just constantly bickering and fighting over the, like, the little stupid shit. But it's not stupid shit when you're in the moment and you're fighting over, you know, I, I'm not changing that lyric or I'm, this is the lead that I played and that's it or... You're making more money than me because you guys didn't agree on how you're going to handle your songwriting credits. You know, if you look at Van Halen albums on the bottom, it always says all songs written by Dave, you know, Eddie, Alex, and Michael. And not all bands do that. You know, whoever wrote the song, that's who gets the credit. And that's when problems start because a lot of times drummers don't write songs. All right. They're really not, even though they're involved in the shaping of the song, 
you didn't write the riff, you didn't write the words, you're getting ungat. You ain't getting nothing. Nothing. So, little word to the wise. You know, if you want peace in your band, and you can put aside the egos, and you're all brothers fighting for the cause, you're either going to say, we all divide this up equally, doesn't matter who writes what, or... You're just going to do it separately. And like, well, I wrote the song. I'm getting the credit. And that's it. You know, it's it, it's a fine line when it comes down to that. Because it is a business. When you're starting a band, you know, you start off, oh, we're going to be musicians and play the garden, this and that. But what you're really doing is you're starting a business. Your band name is going to become a brand name. Like Coca-Cola. You know, this is why all these bands fight over band names. Who came up with the name? You know, there's how many different Faster Pussycats? How many different Rats? How many L.A. Guns now? Well, you know, Stephen Riley's L.A. Guns. Philip Lewis's L.A. Guns. They fight over the name of the band. So my advice to you guys who are starting bands, you better figure that all out first when you're first signing contracts because it will save you a ton of trouble and grief down the road, okay? How are you going to split the song royalties? Who owns the band name? All that stuff. All right? Little word to the wise there. <laughs> anyway, so this is the, the label, all right? It's the same thing, the Atlantic label. All right, I, I think I just showed you this, right? Yeah. So, yeah, a lot of drama goes in band stuff. You know, not all of it is advertised, but it's not... Easy peasy, man. It's it's a lot of work. It takes a lot of patience. It's a lot of give and take, man. You know, it's it's you're in a relationship with four other guys, and you got to learn to bend and this and that. And not everybody's willing to bend, and you're gonna butt heads and fight like cats and dogs. All right, just, just throwing that out there. You pick it up when I'm laying down. All right. Now I showed just once before. All right, this is a bootleg, the Dancing Undercover uh, tour. This is cool. It sounds sounds great, man. Monsters of Rock. It's got, um, starts off with Lay It Down, You're In Love, Want A Man, Sweet Cheetah. You should know by now, the morning after, side B. Dance, drive me crazy, slip of the lip, walking the dog, round and round, and body talk. Yep, this is a radio broadcast recorded live at Monsters of Rock Festival. Uh, yeah, man. August 30th. 1987. Sounds great. Right, I'll show you the inside again, even though I did it once before. All right. We got Godzilla. <laughs> side B and side A. All right. Comes in the plastic. Comes in there. All right. Comes with a poster, which is basically the album cover, nothing fancy. All right. It's not even worth putting on a wall or anything. <laughs> what do you want? Could have came with nothing. Be grateful, all right? Oh, fuck. All right. That goes in there, and this goes in here. This album I picked up at my local record store. This is one place I go to, and every once in a while, he's got, like, some cool shit just, like, hanging out in the metal section, and I'm lucky enough to find it. Now, I went there a few times, and this was always sitting there, and then finally I went, I'm like, you know what? I'm, gonna, I'm finally going to pick this up. It happens. All right, moving on with that. Now we get into Detonator. All right, and it's got some cool stuff. Um, I think Bon Jovi's on here actually. I don't know if he co wrote something or he's just doing some backing vocals. Uh, I know it mentions it here. Yeah, background vocals on Heads I Win by John Bon, ugh, John bon Jovi. <laughs> yeah, man, this is when Desmond Child was, was huge. If you don't know who Desmond Child is, Desmond was in a band, his own band back in the 80s, and he was with, uh, oh my God, the keyboard player, Holly. She, she's huge, and I can't think of her last name right now. She wrote a shit ton of songs for everybody. All hits. So anyway, Desmond, in his own right, basically co-wrote Slippery When Wet. I mean, he co-wrote with Kiss. Everybody. He was a hit maker, and so was the girl I'm talking about. She actually has a book out now. And she played all the keyboards on Kiss Unmasked. She wrote uh, some stuff on the Heart album, you know, the popular one. What about Love and all that stuff. I mean, the woman just wrote a ton of stuff, man. Her and Desmond, they were in the same band together. 
but I, they're just phenomenal. Okay, I can't think of a band you're in right now. Listen, when I sit and do videos, everything just comes off the top of my head. I'm not, there's nothing written down or anything. So I'm just, something pops in while I'm explaining something. That's what happens. So if I get names and stupid shit like that, it's going to happen. All right. Oh, <laughs> all right. Detonator. So you got uh, Shame, Shame, Shame's a cool song. Loving You's a Dirty Job's all right. Uh, scratch That Itch. Eh. One Step Away is cool. Hard Time. All right, Heads I Win, Tails You Lose is kind of, you know, All or Nothing. Can't Wait on Love is a cool song. Giving Yourself Away is a cool song. Top Secret's all right. So my three favorites on here are Shame, 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 Can't Wait on Love, and Giving Yourself Away. I mean, even at their look now, you know, they're starting to dress down, right? All that fancy glam shit is starting to go bye-bye. You know, the tide was changing, man. All right, it's the albums, nothing here. Paper sleeve. Again, the same Atlantic label. It's still signed. Hey, what's going on here? Hmm. <laughs> so, cool stuff. Rats a great band. You know, they just... They were, they were one of the best. They, you know, one of the top. You know, Steven's still out there doing his thing. Under the rat name, Right. I mean, technically, it was Mickey Rat, and then it became Rat, right? And I think that was all him. So he owns the name. That's it. All right, so now moving on. Um, I forgot to show you this in the beginning because I was too busy talking, but this book here, all right? Hair Metal. Again, Martin Popoff. I mean, I should get stock in this guy's freaking company because almost every book that I'm showing you is by this guy. He writes a ton of shit. But yeah, cool book. Hard, same thing, decent size, all right? And this this basically covers everything. I mean, it's just, through the years, it, it starts off with like Elvis and Little Richard, you know, there's a timeline on the bottom here. And it's got all sorts of quotes, man, from every freaking band on the LA Strip and, and then some. It's got some cool pictures, talks about the albums, um, this, that, and the other thing, Y&T, another great band. Y&T is not a freaking hair band, okay? Not at all. I want to talk about them one day. They are not a freaking hair band. They got caught up. I mean, so many bands got caught up in that shit because it's almost like they had to. I mean, look at Priest with freaking Turbo. Is Priest a hair band? No, they just got caught in that movement, you know, trying to be whatever, you know, Kiss. Come on, man. They're not a fucking hair band, but they got caught in that crap. Crazy Nights. That album, Crazy Nights, you know that band Survivor, Eye of the Tiger, and you know, I Can't Hold Back? It sounds like that. That production on Kiss Crazy Nights sound is like the production on Survivor, and it sounds like the production on the Heart album, Heart, you know, Ann Wilson, you know, What About Love, and These Dreams, it's the same freaking sound. Like, that sound was getting popular. Even the, the first damn Yankees album had that sound. You know, Ugh, it drives me crazy. Certain bands are not hair bands, okay? Y&T is not a freaking hair band. Mm, I don't think so. And I'll argue to the death about that too. All right, so you guys, and speaking of Kiss, right? Paul Stanley, I mean, Paul fit right in with that. Gene did not. <laughs> and that's very well documented. You're looking at his clothes. So yeah, cool book, man. There's the back, right? Get my hand out of the way. I mean, Twisted Sister, really, I don't consider them a hair band. You know, when they first came out, you know, in the clubs around here, in New York, and Long Island, I mean, they're not a hair band. Just because D had big blonde hair doesn't make them a freaking hair band. All right? All right, Stay Hungry. No, no, the stupid videos doesn't put them in a hair band thing. Their music is too hard to be hair band. All right, stupid leader of the pack, but... They were doing that back in the club days. You know, Sister did some cover songs back in their day. You know, Leader of the Pack is a, an old song from the 60s. You know, they would rock it out. Should they have released it as a single? No. It shouldn't have even have been on that album. It should have been like a B-side of something. So, you know, some of those bands made mistakes that totally just killed their career. All right? But Sister is not a freaking hair band. All right. Anyway. Hair metal book. Pick it up. All right? Show it to you one more time. 
pretty cool. All right. Moving on. Another band that I freaking love that to me is not hair band. And that's Great White. Okay. This is their EP. Get in there. This was the first thing I bought. I actually bought this at a flea market in Yonkers. <laughs> the Yonkers racetrack had an outdoor flea market every weekend. And, you know, I was with my, one of my guitar players at the time, this guy, Pat. Him and I took a ride over there, you know, just walking around, trying to find the album section. And there it is, you know, and again, so I see this. I'm like, oh, cool. What, what is this? And I flip it over. I'm like, well, they look rocking. I don't know what any of this shit sounds like, but I'm going to check it out. And I checked it out, and I freaking loved it, man. You know, you got Don Dockin on here. Um, I think he uh, co-produced. No, produced by Don Dockin and Michael Wagner. So when I saw the Michael Wagner name, I knew him from, uh, my God, like Accept. And he did a, a bonus track with on, on a Raven album. I mean, that name, it was out there. And I already knew Dockin because I had Dockin's album, the first one. So I was like, all right, cool. Fuck it. And I took it home, man, and the song Out of the Night and, and Last Time, that's a great song, man. On Your Knees, which ended up on the first album, so did Out of the Night. No Way, it's another great song. No Way Out, yeah. Dead End, ended up on the first album, but pff, Last Time and, and No Way, great songs, man. So let me show you what this looks like, in case you ain't got it. So this was the inner sleeve, came in a little bio. Right, the guy's hanging out down there. Stocking in that picture? No. <laughs> All right. Then you got, you know, the studio tracks. The studio tracks. The studio pictures. Is that Wagner? Yeah, there's Wagner and Doc in there. All right, so it's it's cool. All right, still listen to this. Bust this out. All right. So that's the label. This is original. This is not... Any kind of reissue, regular vinyl. Cool song, man. And both, whatever is on this side is on this side. <laughs> All the songs are on one side, on both sides. Does that make sense? You follow me? Yeah, cool stuff, man. Great stuff. All right. So, yeah, so I ended up buying this. Looks like there's a date. September 1st, 1984. Again, I don't know when this came out, but that's when I bought it. All right. I like that I did that. It's, it's kind of cool. You're like, holy shit, September 1st, 1984. I was just getting ready to go back to school. Yeah, getting ready to go back to school. That was 12th grade. It's crazy. All right. So then the first album, Great White. You know, now more production, but it's still war. This does not sound like poison. This is not freaking hairband, okay? Picture on the back. Guy's chilling. And this album, I love. I played this to death. My God. This was another one of those albums that stayed on my turntable for like a week, two weeks. Just kept flipping it over, flipping it over. All right? It's cool. Oop. Get my hand out of the way. Some pictures. You got the words on the other side. This is a great album, man. I mean, out of the night. Cool song. Stick it. Which is still a great song. Substitute the Who song. Now, Pete Townsend made them change a line in that song. Something about Plastic Mac, and he changed it to, um, I forget now, it's been so long. Uh, substitute uh, your lines for that. I see right through your Satan crap. So, they he made them change the line to Satan crap instead of Plastic Mac, whatever the original word was. So yeah, they had to change it. As per Pete Townsend, <laughs> which is cool, All right? EMI label, all right? Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, I love this album. This album is killer, man. Killer, no filler. Great white. Yeah. And then the drummer, because he's only on this one album, he went on to... Uh, it was a band called Holland, I think. And I think the lead singer's last name was Holland. Yeah, Gary. He went on to that band, and then I don't know what happened after that. Or was it Brixton? Brighton? Ah, I forget the band he went to after that. But it was the singer's name. Oh, there's a date in here, too. Check it out. 42684. It's written there. April. 
All right, throw this in there. It's funny, I, I can see the album title. I think it starts with a B. I'm gonna have to look it up after I'm done with this. Yeah, but that was the same as that's where Gary went. Cool shit. All right, so now they do that. Now Great White comes out with their second album, and it's completely different, per se. It's not as hard and raw as that. And that's shot in the dark, all right? It's a little more keyboard-oriented, all right? This is my uh, property of blah, 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 promo, blah, blah, blah thing. Yeah. Property of Capitol Records. Cool stuff. Now... Again, the sound is completely different on here than the first album. Um, the only thing I don't like on here is is the cover version of "Give Me uh, Give Me Some Lovin." Raven did the same cover of it, and I think Helix did too. No, it was a different song. "Give Me Give Me Good Lovin." Yeah, that's a completely different song. But yeah, so Raven did a cover of this song, and Great White did it, and I don't like either one of them. But the other songs in here are kind of cool, man. You know, She Shakes Me is kind of cool. What Do You Do For Love is cool. Face the Day. I don't want to face the day. Yeah, that's every morning my alarm clock goes off. Uh, is there anybody there? Cool, mysterious kind of ballad thing. Shot in the Dark was cool. Runaway. I dig that song. It's awesome. Waiting for Love, another cool ballad. So, I mean, it's got some cool stuff on it. All right, show you. They still got the bass player at this time, but now they get Audie. Not Augie, Audie, the new drummer in here. But yeah, it's cool. It sounds completely different. I mean, the first album is better, but I can deal with this. This is cool. All right. Now they're on the Capitol label, right? The last label I showed you was EMI. Now they're on Capitol. So, you know, they must have said, hey, you're going to have to kind of change the sound a little bit. But I dig it. It's cool. When I'm in the mood, I throw it on. So then after this throw this back in his I uh, thought there was something else in here come on now they get kind of rocking again you know not so much keyboards now they're a little more guitar oriented once once bitten now this is a good album as well you know these guys put out some good albums man and again to me none of this is freaking hairband it's not just because their hair I mean the hair wasn't all that big Get the fuck out of here with that shit all right, there. Does that look hairband to you? All right, they, all right. So the hair's a little bit big, but the music is not hairband. They're not dressed up as chicks. They never did. Not hairband. All right, let me bust this out. Again, it's on the Capitol label, plastic liner. You're right. And I want to know your comments after this because a lot of you guys have been writing, which has been great. And I love what you've been writing. Everything is cool. But uh, yeah, I'm interested to know, you know, what do you think the differences of glam and hairband? And I mean, do you think Great White is hairband? I mean, if you do, that's cool. You know, me, I don't, I don't think it fits. Just because they were from LA, you know, that doesn't mean they're freaking hairband, all right? But yeah, they got some cool shit on here, man. It's hard to read the lips in the back. My God, I'm such an idiot. Hold on. All right, what do I like on here? I mean, the first Lady Red Light is kind of cool. Good song. Gonna Get You. Great song, man. Rock Me. That was the big MTV hit, man. I saw these guys open up for Priest. They were freaking great. All Over Now. Great song. It's a really good album, man. Miss Treater. Nothing on here sounds like Hair Band. Not even close. Uh, Never Change Heart. Fast Road. Save Your Love, which was the, the ballad off of this. You know, the power ballads were getting really big and getting really obnoxious, not for nothing. I mean, ballads have been around for the longest time. I mean, most rock bands always had ballads, okay? All of a sudden, it became, oh, you, the power ballad. Power ballad, you know? And, and what, what started all that? Kiss Beth? <laughs> Power Ballad, I mean, Journey, Open Arms, I mean, all bands, a lot of bands had slow songs, you know? Now all of a sudden, they're Power Ballads, we're going to give them a name. And by the end of the 80s, a lot of those Power Ballads that the record companies were making these guys do was just killing them all together. You know, all of a sudden, they, they would release 
<clears throat> as the, the MTV, they would release the power ballad and then they would release like the hard rock single to follow it. It was a joke. <clears throat> I mean, look what happened to Extreme. More Than Words. The rest of that album is, is, is good, man. But you know, More Than Words was the hit song and then <clears throat> was huge. And then the other one, they're wholehearted, which it's not really metal, but the rest of that album is, is really good. But that song kind of just destroyed them after that because the album after that did nothing. It's it's a shame, man. All right, moving on with Great White. So you got Once Bitten and then you got Twice Shy. <clears throat> now, this is a special edition. This is a double album and it's got some live stuff. And let me show you this real quick. You can see that. All right. Live at the Marquee. All right. Official bootleg. But it sounds great. All right. Now, it's the same cover as the other one. It's got the same backing. Woo. All right. Again, I mean, besides this dude in the back, look like he just came out of the freaking beauty salon, but still not hairband. All right. They still weren't dressed up as chicks. They still weren't wearing makeup. Bluesy rock. Good shit. All right. So this is a double album. So you got the studio album. All right, this is the, the studio album. It's got the words, production notes. You know, just come I, some good songs on here. Moving is okay. Heart the Hunter, uh, Highway Nights is cool. The Angel song. Here we go with the ballad. <clears throat> Mr. Bone is cool. Baby's on Fire is a good song. Uh, she only. It's another ballad. It's a real cool song. House of Broken Love, great blues song, man. Once bitten, twice shy, which was the cover song from uh, Mott the Hoople. <clears throat> Yeah, Wasted Rock Hands. Cool stuff, man. All right? What the hell else is on here? It's only rock and roll, bitches, another woman, bitch. There might be some other songs on here. Please hold. Well, this is on the Capitol label. Again, just different looking label. But why do I got a feeling there's like some extra songs on here? Because there is. All right? So you got House of Broken Love, She Only... Once bitten, twice shy. Then it goes into Wasted Rock Ranger on here. And what's on the other side? It's Only Rock and Roll, the Stone Song. And a song called Bitches and Other Women. <laughs> cool. Yeah, man, I forgot those songs were even on here. So this is basically <clears throat> the original album with some bonus tracks. All right. Now the live album... Live at the marquee, right? That's one side. It's the other. Ain't nothing going on there. Different label altogether. Okay. Get a shot of that. Now, this is not 180 vinyl, nothing like that. It's regular flimsy vinyl. It's got some cool songs on here as well, man. Shot in the dark. Uh, what the hell does that say? The writing is so bad on here. Gonna get you. Money all over now. What else is on here? Is there anybody there? Face the day. Rock me. It's written in as like weird font. I hate when they sh freaking do that shit. I'll do what you want to do. All right. So there's some cool stuff on here. Great White. Another band that just went to pieces. I mean, I mean, it's unfortunate of that fire. You know, that was, that was bad. You know. You're playing small clubs like that, man. You can't do pyro. You know, you can do a fog machine. You can't do pyro. That that was a shame. <clears throat> you know, for the families that lost all their loved ones, I mean, come on, man. Really? I, I, I don't even want to get into that. It's fucked up. All right. So then he come out with Hooked. Now, there's two different versions to this cover. There's the edited and unedited. Edited. Did it, did it, did it, did it. All right, so this is the edited. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. Edited, 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 edited. All right, hooked. Still in my shrink wrap. Edited version, all right? The chick on a hook. Now this album's got some cool shit on it as well, man. <clears throat> Call it rock and roll. The original Queen of Sheba, Cold Hearted Love. Can't Shake It. Loving Kind, it's a great song. Heartbreaker, Congo Square, South Bay Cities. Just all bluesy kind of cool shit man desert moon great song man afterglow that's the uh bonnie lane cover pull this out all right 
So you got the words, production notes. Guys just hanging out, right? Again, not hair, man. Not at all. Good album, man. Cool shit. And I have their other album too, Sail Away. But I got it on CD. That was a double disc. It had some live stuff and some really cool acoustic shit. I was going to pull it out, but I'm like, eh, I was going to do the vinyl. So edited version, all right? See the chick? Unedited. See the chick? <laughs> all right, you guys see the difference? My big head in the way? That's the difference. The back is the same, all right? But the front is not. Now this... <clears throat> is an Argentinian press, Argentina. It actually kind of says it right there, Argentina. Okay, good luck trying to find this. You can find it here and there, but someone's gonna a lot of money for it, all right? So this pretty much comes with the same thing, all right, but what was my record sleeve, this is just single. Okay, flip it around, same shot, all right? Bust this out. It's just on plain white paper in the old capital thing there. Yeah, no, nothing's written in Spanish. <laughs> but this is an Argent from Argentina. All right. Argentina Press. Throw that back in there. Throw this in here. Again, I saw these guys were priests, and I think I saw them one other time. I don't remember. It's been a while. I would have to go through my ticket stubs. All right. Come on. Get in. All right. So, saw him a priest. Got the tour program. 1991. Still got it. Girl on the back. The hook tour. Cool stuff. Yeah, I got a lot of tour books. I mean, if you guys saw my Maiden video, just all my Maiden tour books, that's it's a lot. <laughs> Just on me. I mean, I got some priest ones. I got a lot of kiss ones. All right. Cool drum set. 40. All right. Michael Landau. Joined the band later. Okay. These guys were good live, man. Just great rock band. Okay. <clears throat> cool stuff. All right. Last page, their road crew, kind of pulling an Iron Maiden there, but that's cool that you show the crew, all right? Great White, not done yet. Got their live album, Great White Stage. This is cool, this is double vinyl. They do uh, Train to Nowhere, Sail Away. So this was on that tour, the Sail Away tour. House of Broken Love, great blues song, man. Maybe Someday, Congo Square, Afterglow. Uh, Face the Day, Old Rose Hotel. That's another great album, man. <clears throat> but again, I got it on CD. I got to find it. I haven't, I don't know if it's even released on vinyl, but that would be a great album on vinyl. <clears throat> Old Rose Motel, that's a great album, man. They do Zeppelin, Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You. <sighs> great version. Rock Me, Can't Shake It, Once Bitten, Twice Shy, and Love Is A Lie. All right, this is Gatefold. Bunch of production notes. All right, that's the back. Cool, looks like it's in a road case. Double vinyl. Pull one out, it's on white vinyl. With a little bit of splash of red. Okay. Very cool, 180 gram. And the other one I do believe is the same exact thing. But I'll show you anyway. Get that in there. I'll put it back later. Come on. <laughs> Gotta fight, right? All right. So that's one label. That's the other. All right. Can you dig it? I knew that you could. Hey, Annette, cigarette. You guys know what movie that's from. Can you dig it? No, it's not the Warriors. That's Can You Dig It? But the other one, hey, Annette, cigarette, can you dig it? I knew that you could. They were, I'll give you a hint, the characters were on the Verrazano Bridge when they said that. The movie's from 1977. Hey, Annette, cigarette, never mind. All right, so another band I want to talk about real quick. 
And again, I, I don't consider them hairband, all right? They had hair, but the music is not hairband. And they're from LA, okay? So this, at one point, was half of Guns N' Roses, all right? This is the guns in the roses. So you know what I'm talking about. LA Guns. This music is not hairband. It's too sleazy. It's too... It's got too much of a swagger to be hairband. Nothing on here sounds like talk dirty to me. Or anything remotely close to freaking faster pussycat. No. Guys just in their own league. This great shit, man. LA Guns. Their first four albums... Maybe five albums. I mean, good shit, man. Just great sleaze, rock. Good stuff, man. You know, Stephen Riley, the drummer, you know, he was in Wasp. Then he went to LA Guns. Great shit, man. You know, you got Phil Lewis, who used to be in Girl. Who, Girl is a London band. They're from England, right? And Phil Collins, not Collins, Phil Collins, who's a guitar player in Def Leppard, they were in the same band together. The band was called Girl. Now, you could maybe consider them, I don't know, glam back in the day because they kind of did the, not really the chick thing, but I, I don't know, man. They were young. <laughs> you know, it's really, really hard to distinguish what was and what is glam and what is hair metal. I don't know. But anyway, so yeah, L.A. Guns' first album, man. Great shit. No Mercy, Sex Action, One More Reason. That's a great fucking song, man. Electric Gypsy, Nothing to Lose, The Bitch is Back, Cry No More, Cool Ballad Man, One Way Ticket. Great song. Hollywood Tees, Shoot for Thrills, and Down in the City. That's another great song. Great band, man. Freaking L.A. Guns. Let me bust this open. This is my original copy. This is not a reissue, all right? All right, you got production notes. Picture of the guys, right? Cool stuff. Pull this out. It's on a vertical label. All right. The original. You can hear it. That's not 180. 180 does not do that. <laughs> but yeah, that's a fucking killer album, man. Come on. And even the first Wasp album does not sound hairband to me. No. Again, they fell in that L.A. scene, but they were not hairband. Again, once we figure out what you guys want to consider hairband and glam metal, whatever. Their second album is freaking great too, man. Cocked and Loaded. I still got the shrink wrap on it. I love this album. Magdalene. Oh my God, what a great fucking song, man. Holy shit. You know, letting go, slap in the face, rip and tear. Rip and tear. Sleazy calm, easy go. Great song, man. Never enough. It's never enough. It's great song, man. Uh, Malaria, The Ballad of Jane. Oh, uh, they actually put that on, I think it was the album after this. They put it on there again, or uh, two albums after this. That was the battle. It was on, it was on MTV. But Magdalene is my, is my favorite song on here. Holy shit, what a great song, man. Give a Little is Cool, I'm Addicted, 17 Crash, uh, Showdown, Ride on Sunset, and then Wheels of Fire. If you got the CD, there's a bonus track. Um, I Want to Be Your Man. No, it's not the Beatles song, but yeah, the CD's got an extra track. Again, my original copy. You bust this out, show it to you. All right. Guys hanging out with some chicks. All right, get the words. Cool stuff, man. Pull this out. Again, it's on a vertical label. All right. Voila. Voila. Now, I don't have Hollywood Vampires on vinyl. I don't even know if it is on vinyl. If it is, I'm not paying 500 bucks for it. All right. If I find it, I find it. I, I kind of know it's out there, but... Uh, I'm not paying that much for it. I mean, I got it on CD. I got all this shit on CD. But yeah, so those are the only two studio albums that I have on vinyl. Now, I got two bootlegs that sound phenomenal. All right? 
L.A. Guns, Boston, 1989. All right. Whoop. Sounds great. Sounds great. This is the back. Get my hand out of the way. Now, I saw these guys live a few times too, man. Great fucking show. This starts with, uh, oh, all right. So, recorded live November 4th, 1989 at the Ophelia Theater in Boston, Mass. Kiss My Love Goodbye, Wild Obsession. Great song, man. Dirty Love, Slap in the Face, Electric Gypsy. Rip and Tear, Never Enough, Sex Action, Bitches Back, One More Reason, and Rock Candy, the Macho song. Good stuff, man. I think this is on blue vinyl. But anyway, this is the record sleeve. All right. Bunch of words. Yeah, it's on blue vinyl. That's pretty cool. Awesome. Sounds great. All right. Not an audience uh, recording. Yeah, that's not going to go in the right way. I'll put it back. <laughs> if it doesn't fit in right, you know what happens. It's annoying. All right, so now I got LA Guns Toronto, 1990. All right, again, sounds great. It's the back. All right, it's gatefold. I'll show it to you. There you go. Songs. Slap in the face, electric gypsy, rip and tear, never enough. Malaria, sex action, the ballad of Jane. Uh, Magdalene, Ugh, great song. Then it goes to like this blues jam, right? I want to be your man, there's a song I was talking about. Nothing to lose, shoot for thrills, and one more reason. I love no more reason, that's a great song. Double album, nothing fancy going on there. This is on like this clear red, right? You can see through it. Yeah, you can see my hand. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Pretty snazzy. I do say so myself. Again, sounds great. It's not an audience recording. So it's recorded really well. Let me see if I can get this one back in. Come yeah, on. You can do it, man. You can do it. Ah, we did it. All right. And the other one is basically the same thing. No, it's not. It's blue. There you go. There you go. Cool. You want me to say it again? What? Well, little Boy Blue. <laughs> For those of you that don't know what that is, just look up uh, Andrew Dice Clay. Little Boy Blue. And you'll hear the rest of it. <laughs> I can't say it here. It's a family show. <laughs> All right. LA Guns. So like I said, I've seen these guys a few times. I still got my tour program. All right? One of them. It's got some cool shit. I'll show this to you. All right? Cool stage shot. Now, I could say something, but I don't know if it's going to ruffle some feathers. But I'll, after I finish showing this, I'll say it. It's probably going to ruffle some feathers. <laughs> All right, cool shots. Not hair metal to me by any means. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to say might ruffle some feathers. I don't know. You, you might hate me for this, but in my opinion, now, Appetite for Destruction is a great album. You know, these can't touch it. But what followed after Appetite, I think these were better. And when I'm saying these, I mean L.A. Guns were better. You know, Use Your Illusion 1 and 2, I mean, they got a, out of all those songs on there, they got a handful of songs that are kind of cool and some of them are not so kind of cool. You know, and you got two versions of Don't Cry and Get in the ring. I don't know, man. But the L.A. Guns from the first album, you know, Cocked and Loaded, Hollywood Vampires, and, and the one after that, and even the one after that, I think are better than what Guns N' Roses did after Appetite for Destruction. My opinion, okay? Don't throw beer bottles at your TV right now. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> All right, we're getting to the end, okay? I told you it was going to be kind of short. Another band that I dig, they were in Oregon. 
They went out to LA and one dude is in Kiss now. All right, there's a hint. I was going to say something else, but once I get to the album, I'll point it out. But yeah, so on that note, Tommy Tyler, Tyler, Taylor, Black and Blue. It's another band that I dig, all right? This first album is, is cool, man. You got The Strong Little Rock, School of Hard Knocks, and Auto Blast is kind of cool. Hold on to 18 at the time. I think I was 17 or 16 when that song came out. That was a theme song for a while. Wicked Bitch is a great song. Action is the cover song by Sweet. Show Me the Night's a cool song. One for the Money, I'm the King. That's a great song. And Chains Around Heaven. That's another great song. All right? Black and Blue's first album. And there's Tommy right there. And now he's in Kiss. All right? And we'll we'll get to that when I move on to the other albums. My original album. I still play it. It's gone. Geffen Leopard. Geffen Leopard. <laughs> Geffen Label. <laughs> Geffen Leopard, you know, they toured with Def Leopard. <laughs> there you go. All right. <laughs> Bonehead. All right. So yeah, I, I like this album, man. It's it's it rocks. It's got some cool stuff. Now, do I consider these guys hair metal? I don't know, man. I mean, you can watch the videos, but I don't, they're not dressed as chicks. You know, they just. I don't know. I for some reason. All right, so oh, I got the date in here too. You guys can see the date. August fourth, nineteen eighty four. So the first Motley Crue album, the first two Motley Crue albums, right? Motley Crue, Too Fast for Love, and uh, Shout at the Devil. I don't consider those hair. I mean, by the time they did the third album, now they're starting to look like chicks. I don't know, man. It's like that is more hair than the Shout at the Devil era. I, I don't know. It just it just gets confusing. All right. Anyway, Black and Blue. That's their first album. Then they come out with this one. All right. Let's look at album two. Without love. Now this album is important for one reason, in which the producer Bruce Fairbairn. All right. This was the album that kind of. Bon Jovi heard and loved the sound of this album, which is why Slippery When Wet sounds like it does. Okay? And if you listen to, like, Loverboy, like, uh, not so much Working for the Weekend, but some of the other ones that kind of came after, there's that sound, you know, and it sounds like Kind of like this, and it sounds like, you know, Bon Jovi, Slippery When Wet. And I can't think of the friggin' Loverboy songs that came out after Working for the Weekend, like the, the later stuff. But there's that certain sound, you know, and like Bob Rock was kind of re responsible for that, you know, and Bob Rock's, I mean, obviously what he did with Metallica sounds nothing like Loverboy, but there's a certain drum sound of like Bon Jovi, Bad Medicine, and Loverboy, you know. It's rock. But it's not scary rock. You know, they toned down the distortion, per se, you know. And they didn't make the drums so bombastic. They just made it more softer, kind of commercially, you know. Like Bon Jovi's uh, New Jersey album. I mean, the sound of that sonically, it's, it's different, you know. I love that album. I think it's great, you know. The sound-wise, I mean, just the song Bad Medicine... Just the way it sounds and the guitar sound is just completely different. Great, great album. But anyway, Without Love. So Bruce Fairbairn, right? Aerosmith, Slippery When Wet, okay? Good stuff on here too, man. Rocking on, uh, knocking on heaven. No, not knocking. Rocking on Heaven's Door. That's a cool opening song, man. Without Love is cool. Stop the Lightning is cool. Uh, Nature of the Beast, cool summertime song, man. Miss Mystery, another great song. Flip it over. You got Swing Time. You know, it's got that little double bass, doom -ba -doom -ba -doom -ba -doom -ba -doom -ba -doom thing going on. Uh, Bombastic Plastic, eh. Uh, we Got the Fires, cool. Strange Things is a little weird. Then um, Two Wrongs, Don't Make It Love. That's another good song. 
So this is a good album, man. This is worth picking up. Right? There's Tony. Cool shit, man. Black and blue. Without love. Now they, their sound, now Mr. Gene Simmons comes into the picture here. Because Black and Blue opened up for Kiss. Okay? And I saw that show too. I was like third or fourth row. Me and my boy Joe, we went. <laughs> I can't even tell you the story. <laughs> but yeah, we you know, had seats that were in the back. And the lights go down. We ran up to the front. And yeah, I can't even get into it. But that was a cool show, man. Black and Blue opened up for Kiss. So now Gene is in the act. Gene starts producing them, okay? I don't know if I got these in order. This one or this one? I forget which one came first. In any event, I think this one came first. Nasty, nasty? I don't know. I can look at the years. But anyway, so black and blue, nasty, nasty, promotional, blah, blah, blah. Produced by Gene, right? Good songs about here, man. Nasty, nasty. I want it all. I want it now. Does she or doesn't she? Gene wrote that song. That should have been a Kiss song because that's freaking a killer song, man. Kiss of Death, great song, man. 12 O'Clock High, another great song. Um, do What You Want to Do, great song, man. I'll Be There For You, co-written by Jonathan Cain, A Journey. Cool song, man. Rules, cool. And then you got the song Best of the West. And you'll hear some uh, familiar vocals on there by Mr. Peter Chris and Ron Keel. That's right. They throw in their little doodads in there. Cool shit. Good album, man. All right. Show you what this looks like. Again, my original copy. Geffen Records. Nice plastic insert. All right. Side one. Side two. Did I take that album out? I don't think I did. Ah, too busy talking. I didn't realize what the hell I'm doing and what I'm not doing. It's typical, right? Saturday. All right. Hold on. Let me bust it out. Because I don't think I did. But yeah, so now Gene is in the act. I don't think I pulled this out. No, I didn't. Nope. All right, there's a shot on him. Okay. Some stuff. All right, you know, here maybe you can, I guess, hair wise, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't think the music was. I don't know. Like I picture a hair band, you know, and I think of Faster Pussy Cat and. Jet Boy and uh, obviously Poison and a whole bunch of other sh L.A. bands, you know, London and I don't know, a lot of bands. If you've ever watched the decline of Western, Western civilization, the metal years, you'll know what I'm talking about. Like all the freaking guys on there besides Megadeth, hair bands. I mean, besides the little interview with freaking... Uh, Aerosmith and Gene and, uh, you know, Wasp. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. But watch that movie if you want. It's hard to watch, especially now. I mean, some of those bands, like I said, London and Seducer and, and some of those other guys, you're like, oh, my God. And the, the people they're interviewing, oh, I'm going to be a rock star. There's, there's no doubt in my mind I'm going to do it. It's, God only knows what those guys are doing today. I don't even want to know. But that's really hard and embarrassing to watch. All right, so the last Black and Blue album, I forget if Nasty Nasty came out first or In Heat. I think Nasty Nasty came out first. I don't know. But here's In Heat, again, produced by Gene. Gene produced this one and that one. This one's pretty cool too, man. It's got um, Rock On, cool song. Sight for Sore Eyes is cool. Heat it up, burn it out. Suspicious, great song. The Snake's kind of cool. Live It Up, great song, man. Uh, Give Me Your Love is cool. Get Wise to the Rise. Great Guns of Fire and Stranger. I mean, all these albums are good, and they just... Black and Blue did not take off. And at this point, Gene was talking to Tommy, and he's like, Hey, man, listen, I don't think your band's going to go anywhere. I'll tell you what. Come work for us. You'll be the errand boy. You do whatever we tell you to do. If I want soup, you're going to go get it. And that's what Tommy did. He went working for Kiss and worked his way up the ranks, man. And look where he is now. You know? It's not what you know. It's who you know. All right? Let me show you the sleeve. All right? There. And you got the words. It's a good album, man. I dig it.
I dig the black and blue albums. Again, it's just on the, the Geffen label. All right. I mean, White Snake was involved in that. You consider White Snake a hairband? Ah. I mean, they definitely got whipped into that whole thing, especially by the time. Uh, the hell's the name of that album? The one that came after uh, 1987. I got it. And I, again, shit slipped to my mind. I'm talking about too much crap. But when Steve Vai was in the band and Adrian Vandenberg and. They, they completely got lost in all that shit, man. Just It became from the old White Snake to the new White Snake. I mean, the 1987 album is cool. You know, it's got two older White Snake songs on it, Crying in the Rain and Here I Go Again, which is on the Saints and Sinner album. And you got John Sykes in that band and the great Ansley Dunbar on freaking drums, man. Great, great band. Was it Neil? I forgot who the bass player was, but anyway... That was a great album. But the stuff that followed after that, they got caught up in that whole hair band shit. All right. Another album band I want to talk about. They're from Phoenix. Okay? Phoenix, Arizona. And I brought up one of the albums in one of the other videos, Night of the Crime. The band is called Icon. Okay? This is their first album. Now, the back of this, definitely hair band. All right? But their songs, I don't consider a hair band because they're not singing about, hey, baby, we're going to party all night. No, it's nothing like that. But the looks of this, hair band. All right? Without a doubt. I mean, look at it. <laughs> but the songs, not hair band. You know, Rock On Through the Night, all right, maybe. But a Killer Machine, On Your Feet, eh. World War, Hot Desert Night, cool song, man. Under My Gun. I love the drums in that song. It's just killer. Uh, there's a little instrumental on here. Rock and Roll Maniac, I'm Alive, It's Up to You. The song titles, yeah, they sound hair metally, but the songs themselves don't sound hair metally, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Because they're not singing about, oh, we're hanging in the sunshine and I'm hanging with my girl on a Saturday night. No, it's nothing like that. Let me show you the album. Now, this is a cool album, man. My original copy. These guys were signed to Capitol. Okay. Side one and side two. Cool stuff. I mean, it's worth checking out. If you want to go to iTunes and check it out or Spotify, if it's even on there, who freaking knows. All right. This album came with a poster, which you're going to laugh at. <laughs> All right. Because that look, but the look doesn't match the music. I mean, you know, Steven's voice does not match the way these guys look you know and thank god by the time they came around to the second album and stuff they got rid of this look thank god because yeah that wasn't but you know you're talking 1984 1985 when this stuff came out cool shit boom all right let me just throw this back in here real quick like i said this plastic stuff is cool because the albums don't get scratched but it's a pain in the ass to get back in I gotta deal with it later. So the second album now, that one is kind of hard rocking. It's more metally. But like I said before, when they came out with Night of the Crime, this one completely, completely different. This is more AOR. It's 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 unbelievable. This is a really good album. All right. And again, like I said, the guy who wrote Judas Priest, Take These Chains, co-wrote a lot of songs on here. And you can take any one of these songs on here and throw it on screen for vengeance. Instead of taking take the chains, and you wouldn't know the difference, right? Especially like the song um, "Dangerous Calling." Priest easily could have did that song and just threw it on screen for vengeance. But you know, "Naked Eyes" is cool. The song "Missing," "Dangerous Calling," like I just said, great song. "Shot at My Heart," "Out for Blood," "Side One's great, man." Uh, "Raise the Hammer's cool." "Frozen Tears," cool ballad, man. Uh, the whites of their eyes, cool. And this, again, the sound on this, again, it sounds like the sound that Kiss was doing on Crazy Nights. You know, it's it's that sound. The drums are kind of, you know what I mean? It, just just listen to it. Listen, go grab your Kiss Crazy Nights album and listen to it. If you got heart, go listen to that heart album that has, you know, What About Love and These Dreams, okay? That sound. Survivor. Not Eye of the Tiger, but High on You and um, what was the other hit? Um, I Can't Hold Back. 
You know, there were staples on the radio. I can't hold back. You know what I'm talking about. That sound is here as well. Um, where was I? Yeah, Hungry for Love and a song I don't like on here too much is uh, Rock My Radio. It's kind of a throwaway song, but this album is really well produced. It's got a really cool sound to it. This album should have boosted them up, but again, it, it didn't go anywhere. You know, not everything went, you know. A gazillion hairband videos all over MTV fighting for freaking airplay was a freaking joke. You know, Trickster made it on MTV, but these guys didn't. And these guys are way better. No offense, Trickster, if you watch. <laughs> Let me show you what this album looks like. All right, you got the words on one side. Pictures on the other, right? Completely different look than what I just showed you. Same band. Same exact band. Now, the singer leaves after this album. Um, he was into some stuff and he got into, you know, born again Christian and he just kind of split. So Icon comes out with this one. They grab a, a new singer, you know, and again, it's, it's another good album. Alice Cooper's on here. He does a little guest thing on here. Cool stuff, man. Original copy, still in shrink wrap. Now look at them now. Completely different band. Now that's the new singer. But the way they look now, not like they started with the first time I showed you, right? Great album, man. Right Between the Eyes, cool out, cool song, man. Two for the Road, Taking My Breath Away, great song, man. Far Cry, In Your Eyes, great. Holy Man's War, Bad Times, eh. Double Life, Forever Young, great fucking song. That song should have been on MTV. Running Under Fire and uh, Peace and Love. Cool stuff, man. Icon, check them out. All right. Let me show you the sleeve. All right. It's got a whole bunch of studio and live shots, which is way too small to even see here. And you got the words on the back. But yeah, Alice Cooper's on here, man. Shows up in one of the songs. Cool band. Now, supposedly, they made another album and it was just never released. It's in the vault somewhere. But there is another Icon album that people are dying to get a hold of. Now, there's one more band I just want to talk about real quick. Um, I only have the one album on vinyl and the other one I have on CD. The second one I don't listen to too much, but this album, I, I dig a lot, all right? Wendy Dio was managing, and I saw these guys open up for Dio. Rough cut. This first album is freaking phenomenal. It's, it's, it's great, right? Cool band, man. I saw them open up for Dio. They were fucking great. You know? The singer went on to Quiet Riot at one point. Bunch of other stuff. You know, the drummer's really great on here. Really good, solid band, man. Take her right off the bat. That's a great riff. Down, 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 down. Bow, bow, bow. Cool riff, man. Peace of My Heart, which was the, um... What's her face's cover? Janis Joplin. <laughs> Never Gonna Die. Cool song, man. It sounds like, you know, it could have been a dreamer by Dio. You know, it's kind of like in that vein. Dream It Again, real cool song, man. Cut Your Heart Out, nice, fast, almost like a Stand Up and Shout Dio song. Black Widow, real cool song. No, it's not the Alice Cooper song, completely different, but real cool, mu m moody song. <laughs> Spit it out. You Keep Breaking My Heart, another great song, man. It's just rocking, man. The Kids Will Rock is cool, Dressed to Kill, and She's Too Hot. Cool. Now these guys, you know, I mean, come on, dude. What are you what, what, what are you doing? So that's hair metal dress code, you know. But again, I don't consider the songs on here hair metal. All right. These guys were signed to Warner Brothers, plastic. And I, I love this album. On CD, it sounds great, man. All right. So yeah, rough cut. Cool band, you know. Again. I was I, the first time I heard this album. Uh, me and a, two of my friends we used to help my other friends band out. We were like you know, temporary like road crew guys, you know, and they they played up and you know not up and down the East Coast, but they played locally, you know, Yonkers and around the area. We used to play um, the Rising Sun a lot in Yonkers, which is now a strip joint called City Limits or something. But um, so my job was I used to 
set the drums up. And then once the drums were set, I used to go do the lights in the back. And then my other two friends handled all the guitar and bass stuff. You know, we were really good friends with the bass player, Carl, who used to be in one of my bands at the time. And we're still friends. Um, but yeah, so I was riding in the drummer's van on the way to the Rising Sun one night. And he had the cassette. And he's playing it, man. And he's like, yo, check this band out. They're called Rough Cut. And, you know, I'm riding shotgun and we're riding to Yonkers, you know, and it's maybe a 15, 20 minute drive, you know. And I'm like, holy shit, these guys are cool, man. He's like, yeah, listen to this song. Listen to this song. And I was skipping around a little bit, you know, and the Black Widow just stands out in my my brain, you know, and the song Take Her. It's like, holy shit. You know, and then after that night, the next weekend, I went to the record store, picked it up, and here it is still in my hand. Let's see if there's a date in here. No. Nah. No date. But yeah, then I saw them open up for Dio. Cool shit. Wendy was managing them. Great band, you know? I mean, Paul, the singer, went out. Like I said, he went out to Quiet Riot. And then a bunch of other bands. And I'm not sure what anybody else is doing, but... Amir Darakia. <laughs> cool stuff, man. So yeah. So that's going to round up this little version of glam, hair, band, whatever you guys want to call it. All right? So... I can't wait to read the comments on what you guys think about what came out of this mouth, all right? <laughs> Again, it's just all opinions. Nothing really freaking matters, does it? No, it doesn't, all right? So we'll call this part one, all right? And then we'll move on to other things. You know, you got the Bullet Boys. You got Lion, Jafria, you know, Cinderella. I was going to do Cinderella, but I'm like, ah, eh, I kind of want to throw in Black and Blue and, and Rough Cut, you know, kind of mix it up a little bit. We'll get to all that stuff another time, all right? So listen, tomorrow's Mother's Day. So if your mothers are still around, mine ain't. But whatever, your wife, the mother of your kids, do the right thing, all right? Now, I am not technically a mother, but I've been called a mother a lot of times. You mother this and you mother that. Yeah, I've been a mother. <laughs> but not because... I did it to myself. There was reasons that someone made me turn into a mother. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't go looking for trouble. Anywho, listen. Saturday, have a great weekend, guy. Z and gals. Mother's Day tomorrow. Be good. Peace out. Take care of one another, all right? And you know, the end of this. Peace out, buttercup. <laughs> I'll see you soon.